والصلاه والسلام على اشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين uh, today we continue our uh, series of uh, uh, explanations of the meanings of the hikam of imam ibn atayllah al secondary may allah be pleased with him and uh, the hikma we're dealing with today has to do with again uh, actions of obedience and this one says halatukal a'mala ala wujud al faragh min ru'unat al nufus i'm uh, uh, devoting uh, the whole of today to this and probably the next hikmah in the line uh, away from the uh, uh, rearrangement of the hikam that i'm attempting and uh, that i worked on for the past weeks uh, due to uh, the tightness of my schedule uh, last week uh, so I'm dealing with the hikmah right away from uh, where it is. This is hikmah number 18 uh, in the uh, uh, hikm. All right. And the English of this hikmah, which I don't have in, in hand now, uh, says that uh, uh, to delay the actions of obedience uh, until you have free time is a folly of the self. Let me say this again because it has the keys to the explanation. Uh, to delay, again, you're delaying actions of obedience till uh, you have free time is a folly of the self. That's uh, again a manifestation of uh, foolishness. Uh, the basic meaning of this hikmah is that delaying actions of obedience until you have time or free time uh, is a folly is due to the fact that one's knowledge of uh, what may happen next uh, is uh, most often uh, difficult to have. One's knowledge of what may happen next is most often difficult to have. And uh, uh, a person cannot know for sure how things will turn out for him the next day, the next week, the next year. And it is always uh, imperative for a person to try to do what one is supposed to do either by virtue of being a Muslim, and that's the basic uh, part, or by virtue of being a Sufi, and that's the extra part. Okay? Now, it is important to distinguish here between what a Muslim has to do, uh, the basic things that a Muslim has to do, and the basic things that a Sufi has to do, since we realize that to call yourself a Sufi is something that lies beyond being a simple Muslim, despite the fact that in the integrity of religion, every Muslim should be a Sufi. Okay? Every Muslim should be a Sufi. What happens though is that people uh, find it enough to do what is necessary, what is imperative the five pillars of Islam for example and they think this is good enough uh, in the hadith uh, the man who asked the Prophet وسلم, whether it is enough to do the shahada to pray the five prayers to fast Ramadan to do zakah and to do hajj and do nothing else the Prophet وسلم, says aflaha abihi in sadaq that is he would be uh, fine if he manages to do uh, only these 
uh, and why the Prophet uh, 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 swears that a person who uh, pledges to undertake the five pillars of Islam and do nothing beyond them uh, why he swears that he would be just fine with this or he would be successful is because uh, uh, there is often a difficulty to stick to the basic things of religion and that you, you, you always need to extend the borders of your piety and of your obedience so that the different concerns of life and preoccupations won't transgress over those basic things so that the basic area of obedience would then erode all right would become smaller and smaller every day so you need to extend the area of obedience beyond the basic area all right all the time so that the basic area itself will not uh, grow smaller and smaller every day okay so that's what i was just saying uh Despite the fact that we distinguish between a Muslim who is a Sufi and a Muslim who is not a Sufi, we know that in reality, every Muslim should be a Sufi. Okay. Some people think they don't need to be Sufis, and so they just do uh, the necessary things, the obligatory things of religion, without really trying to go beyond them. Despite the fact that even within the obligatory things, you have problems uh, you have afat as Imam Abu Yazid Bastami, may Allah be pleased with him, calls them. You have shortcomings, defects in your performance of these prayers. Prayers, sorry. And this means that you always need to make up for the losses that you suffer from while you are performing the the basic duties. When you are performing the basic duties, there are losses, there are shortcomings, there are defects, there are loopholes. All right, there are dents, like the dents in your, in your teeth, all right? So you need to, feel, to, to fill these dents, okay? You need to, to go beyond the basic things with nawafil, different forms of, of, uh, of uh, uh, actions of, of, of worship, all right? So that you, make up, you can make up for the losses, that is the... Uh, uh, the, uh, for example, your inattentiveness while you are praying, all right? The little sins you make while you are fasting, okay? Uh, different different uh, diseases of the self that always cut across your, your obedience to Allah, your acts of worship, all right? So again, you need to make up for these things by doing istighfar all the time, for example, by uh, praying nawafil. Uh, by uh, uh, going beyond zakat to give alms, uh, by uh, doing uh, uh, that is uh, supererogatory hajj, that is naf hajj, that is naf and not uh, obligatory or umrah or all of these things, or simply by doing dhikr, all right, which is the easiest way of improving on yourself and on uh, uh, right, uh, making up for the losses as we say or compensating for them okay so one basic problem of a muslim who is not a sufi or a sufi who is not a good sufi is to delay uh, the actions of obedience till one has free time well i will do now when i have time all right I will do Qiyam when I have slept well by day, okay? I will uh, uh, do uh, uh, supererogatory, that's very difficult to pronounce, that is nafl, fasting, uh, all right, when, uh, when I have time and, and especially in winter because it's very difficult to do that in summer. And you continue in the same manner and until you end up doing absolutely nothing beyond the basic uh, duties or the obligatory actions uh, of obedience or actions of worship. All right. So you always delay until you have the uh, uh, favorable circumstances, and uh, the favorable circumstances may never come. Okay, and then you end up with absolutely nothing, and that's why delaying those uh, nawafil 
I'll write until you have free time. It's called by the author here, Afholi, that is Ru'una or Hamaka. Okay. And it is uh, more so for a Sufi, because by definition, a Sufi is uh, someone who is after Allah's pleasure, someone who is after Allah's favor, someone who is trying, is trying all the time to be godly, someone who is trying all the time to be devoted to the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Uh, the Sufis, in this respect, say uh, something uh, that, is, uh, that was greatly uh, appreciated by Imam al-Shafi'i, may Allah be pleased with him. He says, Sahibtu al-Sufiyyata, let me say this in Arabic first. Sahibtu al-Sufiyyata, fata'allamtu minhum kalimatayni qawluhum al-waqtu kassayfi illam taqtahu qata'aka. وقولهم نفسك إن لم تشغلها بالحق شغلتها شغلتك بالباطل الوقت كالسيف. That we we always repeat uh, this uh, sentence without knowing who said it and in what context. <coughs> but it was said in a context that's very closely uh, related to uh, Sufism. <coughs> said by Imam Shafi'i, as I said, <coughs> all right, and he said that he learned only to these two sentences. But if you look at the word only, it is deceptive. He says only these two sentences. Because if you look at the word only, all right, you would find that this is a methodology, a whole methodology for life, a whole methodology for life. So it was quite enough for Imam al-Shafi'i to learn these two words, to learn these two sentences, to realize that the time is like a sword. If you don't use it well, it would cut you off. It would cut you to pieces. That is time. Okay. And the other thing is to realize that if you don't uh, all right, uh, give yourself, that is the self, uh, uh, obligations, that is obligations, if you don't ask yourself to do actions of obedience all the time, it would ask you to do actions of disobedience. So either you give it duties to perform or she will give you a hard time asking you to disobey Allah instead. So this is the, this is the logic of it. And this goes back to the hikmah that we are explaining again. To delay your uh, uh, actions of obedience is a folly of the self. All right? So the self is involved here too. Okay? It's a folly of the self. And after that, if you don't spend your time well and do what you have to do, read your awrah, do your dhikr, uh, do muraqaba if you are actually asked to do that by your sheikh. Uh, 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 learn, okay? Get ilm from uh, those who teach it. Different things that you, you, you can do with your time. If you don't do that, all right, you're wasting your time. Time is cutting you off, cutting you to pieces like a soul. And at the same time, you are giving yourself, that is the ego, the evil commanding self, and nafs al amara, the opportunity to give you duties of evil. All right, to ask you to do evil. All right, so again, it's, it's, it's like a cup. You either fill it with water, all right, or it is filled with poison. Okay, so you either fill it with water, with a good drink, or it is filled with something that is unsavory or bad to drink. 